So, granularity always has attributes like angularity, roundness, sphericity. See, suppose this is a particle, perfect sphere, correct? And we started shearing it under compression. So, what is going to happen? It will tolerate up to a certain point, elastic range. Now, there might be a breakage, crushing, which might occur. The moment crushing occurs, what happens? The system becomes slightly less uh, rounded, the sphericity is changing. The more and more system becomes flaky, irregular, interlocking effect comes, correct? That you have to take into account. Which one easy to compact this or a irregular system or a fine material? You have to decide which one is easy to compact. Yes, so that means here the densities cannot be achieved very high. That is the limitation of this. So, even if it gets converted to a rhomboidal structure, the densities you are going to achieve much, but once we start shearing, the whole thing is again back to this discussion. So, in my opinion, more cohesion will get mobilized. So, if you remember in the last lecture, what we discussed is uh, the more and more the system is irregular, all right, what is going to happen? The better interlocking effect is going to happen and better interlocking is going to give more cohesive nature to the soils, keeping the density constant. So, all these graphs are going to be density dependent, please remember, fine. That is what I said. So, shear strength is increasing the form of the cohesion, not the friction. So, you just imagine the strength comes out of the two component and say interplay between the two components, clear? Yeah? So, for general soils, this could be any situation depending upon the stress. Now, you cannot say sands will show only friction, clays will show only cohesion. That part we will start discussing slowly and slowly. So, in short, what we have done is, we have device direct shear testing again to characterize their response. And this time what we have done is, we have included the state of stress to which they are getting exposed. So, from this stage, if I want to lift it, let us say because of flooding, I have to lift the embankment. So, what is going to happen? The sigma 1 prime becomes sigma 1 prime, sigma 1 prime not in that way, let us say sigma A prime, clear? So, this sigma A prime is going to be from sigma prime to sigma A prime. So, C phi is getting converted slowly and slowly to maximum C and less phi. Texture and friction truly speaking for fine grain materials or coarse grain materials? No, you cannot mix it up. So, in fine grain material when we talk about the texture, this is the pore structure, alright and that is what is going to govern the texture and that is what is going to govern the cohesion. So, write this question. Maybe after third lecture, we will discuss about this OC, NC comparison. Just write down at the back of your notebook. I think I asked somebody else also to write to you or somebody else to write a question. So, that time we will discuss about the fine grain texture thing, okay. In coarse grain material, we do not define texture as such. So, texture is a mesonomer for coarse grain materials. Coarse grain materials are basically particle shape, size, specific gravity. And why specific gravity? So, that the particle should not get crushed. So, if you are dealing with pure quartz, you know that it is not going to get crushed up to 30 MPa. So, this graph is going to be linear. But suppose if you are working with a soft mineral like sandstone, oh no, sorry, uh, suppose let us say. Uh, calcium carbonate or calcite is going to yield very easily. So, for coarse grain materials we normally do not use the word texture, alright. Time dependent consolidation of the materials, yeah. So, at a constant stress, time dependent deformation
of the soil mass. So, the best possible example is you take a candle, put it on a table in a dingy room, forget about it and come after 5 years or 10 years. What happens? The initially the candle would be like this and then constant stresses, gravity, time dependent deformation. that is creep. So, normally we do not take into account creep effect much in soils unless you go into the theory of rheology. So, read the papers by Rakshit Shetty and he has worked uh, in the creep of fine grain materials. So, for all your practical purposes the settlements are going to be either immediate settlements or majority of them are going to be consultation settlement provided you are dealing with fine grain materials. Correct. So, you must have realized that we stopped somewhere at 90 percent in the test and we said that this is going to be maximum time factor for 90 percent and beyond which you did not ask a question. So, beyond this consolidation creep takes over. And we say that this time tends to infinity. In concrete, you must have taken a creep coefficient to design your concrete beams and columns, is it not? So, this factor is a function of some multiplier 0 0.00 something multiplied by delta t. Now, let us switch over from 2D to 3D, which is going to be more realistic. So, let us start this dialogue between the plane strain versus a triaxial state. We know the pros and cons of conducting direct shear box test that means the plane strain idealization and we said there that most of the time when I take out a sample from the ground this is going to be a three dimensional situation correct. So, this is more realistic as compared to plane strain. However, it is very difficult and expensive to create a 3D situation in the laboratory and test the parameters and complicated also, but more realistic. So, suppose if I take an element. And if I apply sigma 1 over here and because of sigma 1 application these strains are epsilon 1, sigma 3 epsilon 3 and sigma 2 epsilon 2. So, plane strain is the condition where the strains in the perpendicular direction of the system are negligible or 0 or they do not change embankment on which the trains pass by clear. So, this is the width of the foundation, this is the top width, this is the length tending to infinity, this is the height of the embankment. In C 323 we analyze this embankment for seepage analysis agreed and the sequence of construction you borrow the soil from somewhere compact it and achieve certain density because all the parameters are going to be dependent upon the density. Typical plane strain condition normal stress clear confining stress nothing is going to change in the perpendicular direction. That means epsilon 2 is going to be 0 for plane strain condition 2 dimensional condition. All right. And if I say that the L is the length, B is the width, H is the height, what is the volume of the system? L into B into H, you must have done this enough in your 10 plus 2 physics, P, J, E. 
And now if I say what is delta V upon V, I hope you can compute this. So delta L upon L plus delta B upon B plus delta H upon H, these are nothing but the strains. Now this becomes the volumetric strain, I will be using it quite a lot, fine. So this is the volumetric strain which is being experienced by the sample under triaxial condition sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 and depiction of the triaxial condition is for a quick reference what did we do? We plotted sigma 1, sigma 3, where is sigma 2? In between and we have ignored it. So this is sigma 2, this is the intermediate principal stress, sigma 1 is maximum or oh, sorry not maximum, major principal stress, sigma 3 is minor principal stress and sigma 2 is intermediate principal stress, clear. So this is the volumetric deformation which I am talking about, volumetric deformation happens in 2D case also, plane, plane strain case, direct shear box, what did we do? We measured delta V separately and we measured delta S separately, agreed? What remains constant is area of cross section, but in assignment number 2 I have written find out the changes which happen because of the change in the area of cross section of the sample. Anyway, so if I assume that the area remains constant over here which is a gross negligence, you should normally apply the area correction. In triaxial case, imagine sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 are acting, we have epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3. Now what is going to happen? This will be equal to epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3. What is the relationship between epsilon 2 and epsilon 3? What we are assuming is, we are assuming that the sigma 1 is the cause, remember, clear, which is causing the deformations under applications of sigma 2 and sigma 3, otherwise life will become very complicated. And what we are trying to study is, because of application of sigma 1 and sigma 2, sigma 3, how much epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 get generated in the system. That is a typical triaxial condition. The simplification of this would be when I put epsilon 2 equal to 0. That means when I say epsilon v triaxial, this will be equal to epsilon 1, 1 minus 2 times mu epsilon 1. Uh, you know, is this okay? Typical three dimensional condition. What about the epsilon v under plane strain condition? Why? Clear? So when you did a consolidation test and your voidometer ring was a steel ring, you put the sample there and compress it from the top. You assume that epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 are 0. Understand this concept. Clear? Typical unidimensional loading. That is why we call it as one dimensional consolidation loading. So, in a consolidation setup, you apply sigma 1 and what you measured is epsilon 1. The steel ring is giving confinement and there are no strains because sample is not free to deform in the epsilon 2, epsilon 3 way, alright. So this is a typical one dimensional loading which we have used under consolidation loading concept, alright. Two dimensional is direct shear box, three dimensional is triaxial test. 
So, we are graduating now from one dimensional to two dimensional to three dimensional. For the equal volume changes, if I say that these two are equal, ultimately the soil does not know whether you are assuming this as a two dimensional system or a three dimensional system. So, what is the relationship you are going to get? You are going to get this will be equal to two times triaxial. What is the meaning of this? Plain strain always gives you a higher poison ratio as compared to the triaxial condition. Correct? What is going to happen to the friction angle? So, if I plot let us say nu versus confinement. Can you help me in plotting this? Suppose if I said this is one graph and this another graph, which one is going to be plane strain? The top one. So, this is the plane strain and this is the triaxial. All right. The more and more you confine the sample, the deformation in the little directions are going to be extremely less. That is the logic. So, what ground does? What nature does? When you take out a sample from let us say a infinite soil mass, homogeneous, isotropic, semi infinite, clear? So, if you take out a sample from here, the neighboring soil is confining it, okay? The moment you have taken out the sample to the laboratory, what has happened? The effect of confinement is lost. So, you have to recreate this effect of confinement to get the parameters which are realistic parameters and hence you have to expose the sample after bringing out from the field to the third dimensional loading and you have to go for triaxial loading. It is a typical triaxial condition. So, normally you know what we do is uh, sigma you are basically talking about epsilon 2, epsilon 3. It is a cylindrical sample which you are taking out. So, there is an axis symmetric case, there is a symmetry about this axis. So, whether this is sigma 3 and sigma 2 does not matter. Which one? Because your epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 for triaxial samples, you know, we are talking about the triaxial sample are going to be same because this is a cylindrical sample. Triaxial sample is always a cylindrical sample. Good. And Concrete technologies, what do they do? They do not break cylindrical cubes, cylindrical samples, sorry. They believe in cubes, all right, because they are more interested only in the ultimate strength and the crushing strength. But for us, there is a lot of story before the ultimate or the crushing state is achieved. So, our philosophy of designing the systems is different. Okay. Now, there are few relationships which you can write uh, uh, phi of plane strain minus phi of triaxial, the friction angle which you get is approximately 0 to 8 degree and there is another relationship which has been given. Phi equal to 1.1 minus B upon L multiplied by phi triaxial. So, this is multiplied by 1 upon 10 